plains of Africa are more surreal than I could have ever imagined. I've heard about the once-in-a-lifetime African plains hunts, and now it's my turn. Today, I travel to the Technicolor Dreamscape of Namibia in southern Africa to hunt at the Ritter family's farm in Voltamade. On this trip, I'll be hunting with legendary African expert Jim McCarthy, who for the past 30 years has made his living researching and hunting the best locations around the world. You never get tired of the, the, the beauty of Africa, it's not just the hunting part, but when you come to Africa, besides seeing the animals, besides seeing the bird life, it's maybe at night you'll look up and it's pitch dark all around and you look up and you just see a galaxy of stars like you, you, you're in some other world. And the sun sets and uh, the sun rises. Everything in Africa just seems different and you really do think you're on another planet. When you come here for a hunt in the open bush savanna, that is real, a real tension in the hunt and in the stalk, but it's a lot of fun. It's a rough bush and a little rough terrain sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. This is it, Tim. This is the first it. day. So wait for Rolf to get up here. Let me ask you a question. Now, what, can you, what kind of wisdom can you impart to me about uh, hunting here? Well, I think one thing I could uh, mention to you is, I know you're probably excited, you know, yeah, and yeah, who yeah. wouldn't be? Uh, I'm excited. To, I've been over here a lot, but knowing your first time, what you're going to see, and I think one thing to remember when you're shooting, keep the shot down below and behind the front shoulder. That's where the, the bread basket is, the lungs, that the heart. That would be like the midline of the animal. Right. And Just go a little bit that. below that. You know, uh, a lot of times in North America, they try to say, you know, right on the point of the shoulder. Not that that's not a bad shot, but I've learned from being in Africa so many times, all the things low are a little lower behind the front shoulder. And if you do that, I think you'll have a lot of one-shot kills. That first shot is the most important. Even if it runs off a little bit, it's probably not gonna go too far. But as you know from your hunting experience, after the first shot, there's never gonna be a perfect second shot. Right. It's gonna be running at the animal. So that first shot is the one that really gonna yeah. do the job for you. And it's not just you and I out here. It's, it's you and I and, you know, about 20 million people who are going to be watching this show. I'm glad you're the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just along to try to assist. <laughs> it's it's an amazing experience because it's so expansive that to cover it all with one hunter, oh, there's just no way you can really do it. Good. What we decided to do was, and what uh, Rolf had suggested was, that we take two hunting parties, two sets of Bushmen, and that Jim goes off with... Uh, one set and I'll go off with another set and roll off himself and that we'll see how our luck is. At this time of the year when you come over here a lot the leaves are starting to fall off the trees and when you do make your stalks it can be very noisy and of course they split us up I had a couple bushmen, so it gave me a chance to go out and uh, do some hunting also, which I was thrilled about. It never uh, turned down an opportunity to uh, be able to go hunting. Are they males? Tim, I think those two big ones are the females. The one is, seems to be highly pregnant. We just got the one, the one, one. The cow is kind of strange. It's got to go crazy. Yeah. I don't know why they come straight at us, but this is evil. Oh man, look at that, look at that. Uh, they have great. Wow, how many is that? That's about uh, 20 or something, isn't it? 15 or 16 at least. They're moving. How far on the right they're moving? Take the other one. Wait, by the tree? Yeah. No, they're Wait. moving again. I think the big one, the, the big uh, stallion is, is more to the left now. Okay. Here they come. Here they come. Oh my god, they're coming right in. Oh my god. We had like a stampede of zebras coming right at us, and it was crazy. It was a it was a circus. I mean, it was just no that no stop don't 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 shoot. I mean, it, it was like crazy, and I I didn't know what to do. I'm just sitting there trying to you know watch, and it was just amazing to see this. Take aim, take aim. Okay, wait, it will come out. Just I can't. It's too low for the pipe, but I got I gotta shoot off yeah. there. Which one? Right, right, right. Okay, the broadside. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Let me take a breath. Christ, Buck, uh, you, you, you went, went down. down, you went See down, that? you went down. Okay, okay. See the dust there? Eh? Let's give it, let's give it okay. a few minutes. Right. But I think you have hit him straight on. Good shot. 
Real good shot. Shooting offhand and uh, uh, at this at this broadside zebra about 200 yards away, actually 193 yards to be exact, was uh, pretty exhilarating. I mean, I was, I had no idea. So I had to shoot offhand and I had to like control my breathing and I had to make sure that I, you know, was gonna get a good shot because it was, everything happened so fast. It was like in the blink of an eye and I had to come up and make that decision and boom. I thought they were gone once they went down that way. I thought that was it, but I, I was just amazed. I was, just, I would have been happy just to have seen that. And yeah. look how close we were. They came yeah. right, right between exactly. us. What, what ammunition did he use? Well, I'm using the Federal, the yeah. Federal with the Barnes Triple X. Uh, I like that. Yeah. It's, it's quite hard. It's yeah. deep penetration. Oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. exactly what, it's a 185 grain. It's really ideal for our planes game here in Africa. Yeah. It's only been out. It's, Optimum. If you looked at that, I showed you last night, yeah. and the casing is this almost, almost identical to a 308. Exactly. And except we have a bit, the 338 uh, caliber is just yeah. a bit larger bullet gun, so. <laughs> I hear you got it. Congratulations, Tim. Thank That's you. great. You know, they're a tough animal to bring down. That's what I hear. I tell you what, it's great. One shot? One shot. Hey. One shot, one kill. <laughs> Tim took a tremendous zebra. It was just fabulous. And uh, he hit it, went right down. I mean, I have to say, the 338 Federal ammunition, I was impressed with the way it, 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 it performed over here. I tell you what, to see zebra. Uh, in the wild, running wild. I mean, it's it's what what says Africa more than you know than that than seeing this beautiful animal out there in a herd. I was just so excited. So and that's the way my day started. And these Elon, I tell you, are just magnificent animals. I mean, they're the largest member of the antelope family here in Africa. Just to see them was a huge, huge treat. They just uh, ended up going off because they ended up catching wind of us and just took off. So we ended up moving back. And as we're moving around, we found a, a group of hartebeest. Through the through the branches, the bushes, and the brambles, and as they kind of moved a little bit, I could see, and all of a sudden, you know, boom, just popped out. Try, just try and find a hole. When you when you can place a safe shot, you can go in. Go ahead, do it. Yeah. I'm not sure that, but I shot right through that bush. That's a good hit. I think it's a good hit. Do we need to wait a little bit? Yep. A few minutes. So it was this amazing experience to be able to creep up on these guys. I was able to get a red caped harder beast. They've got this very long face. Uh -huh. okay. Their hind quarter is a bit lower than the front. And they've got this uh, kind of jumping or flying um, style of running, you know. So it, it, it looks like very light weight when they go over the ground and at a very fast speed. That's why the cheetahs like to um, take the hartebeest. Oh, so this is a favorite food of the cheetah. Favorite, yeah, favorite ah. food of the cheetah, especially the young hartebeest. 
I wonder how Jim's doing. Yeah, I <laughs> hope he's doing great, you know, to have some success as well. Ooh, we've had a great day. Yep. Ooh, boy, oh boy. We went out to uh, an area near a watering hole, and we sat there for quite a while. At the last part of the evening, uh, when I was about ready to pack it in because it was dark, getting, getting dark, not quite yet, uh, Rolf spotted a pair of oryx. I have two oryx. One seems to be a very strong boy. How about the right hand side is the big one. The one on the right hand side? Yeah. Oh, it looks good to me. Big tongue. Good, it's heavy and long. Down, go down. See Perfect. Yeah. Right down. Good, go on. In his tricks. Right in. Great the shot. Pop right Great down. shot, Tim. Perfect shot. When I got the signal to go ahead and take the shot, I shot, and the Gims book went right down. And we got out there, and it was getting dark. But as we got out there to see this thing, as Jim McCarthy and uh, Rolf both were, oh my God, look at the size of this thing. Wow, look at that. Tim, this has been a great shot, Dave. Eh? It's. Oh man. Oh, wow. 450 yards. I mean, that's real, re real far. Last, what a heavy Last little bit of light today. Man, I think what a it, day. It went a bit dark early because of the cloudy sky. They're called the Desert Warrior because they have these huge spears. His uh, longest uh, horn was, uh, I think it was 96, and the base was around 22 centimeters around, and it scored uh, like a 232, which apparently is pretty darn good for these guys. And Jim kept saying, man, you don't understand. For your first Gims buck, this is a real, real trophy. This is something that, this is a once in a lifetime deal here, man. You don't understand. To start like Tim boy, coming over here for his first safari yeah. to shoot a trophy of this quality, yeah. gold medal without a yeah. doubt, um, and a bull, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, yeah. this is big time. And I was just, you know, I take excitement. I kind of internalize it and just kind of feel it. And I was just, uh, you know, I was jumping out of my, my skin here just to, uh, to see this guy. He was just amazing. There's such a beautiful animal as well. Since I was a kid, I tell you what, coming to Africa is like one of those dreams, you know? And yep. This is like, uh, thanks for helping fulfill that. Tim, uh, like I say, is, is a successful actor in Hollywood, in movies, in television. And you know, you put somebody, take them off the set and put them into the real life out in, out in the bush of Africa. Uh, it, it's, it's quite a, a different experience. All the different animals that he's hunted have just been absolutely one-shot kills. They go right down or it's just a 50-yard walk. There they are. It's been really great to watch somebody on his first trip be so successful and be so good at what he's doing. Words truly are hard to come up with after such an amazing hunt. Now this was my first trip to Africa, and I'm hoping it's not my last. The diverse country of Namibia christened my African hunting experience, and with Jim McCarthy and Rolf Ritter as my guides, I've learned more than I could have ever dreamed. Game was more plentiful than I imagined, and the hosts, well, they were truly world class. Jim McCarthy said to me, hunting is not about the animals that you harvest, but about who you hunt with. And folks, today, I had the best of both worlds.